The Sinkfield Cup 2022 has begun and in the first round itself, Magnus Carlsen was pitted against Jan Nepomneshi. Now Magnus and Jan played an entire world championship match in Dubai and after that, this is their first classical encounter that they are playing against each other. They did play Rapid and Blitz, uh, but they haven't played classical chess. So here's how the game begins and you know, today morning I woke up and played this entire game on an actual chess board trying to guess Carlson's moves and it was really amazing because there was no engine to guide me there was nothing I was just trying to think on my own and I would ask you to do the same try to guess Carlson's moves at the moments where I ask you to pause the video and you will realize how amazingly well the world champion played okay d4 knight f6 c4 e6 Carlson's white uh, knight f3 d5 and here Magnus took on d5 so generally in the queen's gambit decline it is said that let's assume that if I play my knight to c3 takes 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 it's a good idea to take on d5 because then you can play the Karlsbad structure but when you have your knight on f3 it's not a very good idea to do this because of what Nepo does in the game knight c3 he plays c6 and black white is not in time to stop black's bishop f5 here activating the bishop. Uh, you can try for queen c2 line which is possible but g6 is pretty good here. Uh, so bishop f4 was played by Magnus but bishop f5 and Yan can say to himself that okay the, the position is around equal you know he is equalized out of the opening but Magnus is like okay it doesn't matter you know the main thing is that I want a fresh position so Magnus here plays the move e3 knight bd7 and now plays the move h3 and this has been played a lot by Badur Jobawa so maybe Magnus inspired by Badur uh, and he played it instantly so this is his preparation bishop e7 and in comes the move g4 so the one thing which you don't want to do here as white is play bd3. I mean, it's playable, but after takes, takes, you will realize that uh, black is doing pretty well here. You know, bishop e7, castles, black has a good bishop on e7. While your good bishop you exchanged with black's bishop on f5. So h3, bishop e7, g4, uh, and Nepo instantly goes bishop e4, so he's still in his prep. Here, um, Magnus now played the move bishop e2. There was a blitz game between Anand and Carlsen in 2009, which had continued bishop g2. But it was Anand with white pieces and Magnus had black at that point and Magnus had won that game. But okay, bishop e2. Queen b6 again quite instantly played by Yan which shows he's still in his prep. Queen b3 by Magnus. The queens are traded and we reach this position. So I was thinking to myself that you know how can Magnus outplay Nepo from such a position. It looks so equal. In fact if someone could be better it should be black right because uh, white spawn structure is a bit mangled up on the queen side. But you will see how Magnus first creates an imbalance, then nurtures it and moves towards victory. So first, I thought bishop c2 is possible. But here, there's a nice move to uh, sort of not refute it, but at least make it sort of important. Rook c1, attack the bishop. Bishop b3 would be a blunder because of knight d2. And now the bishop is sort of lost. I'll recover the pawn. So bg6 was played by Yan. Uh, it could be quite possible that the best move in this position is h6. But then again, I'm not so sure if Yan did not like knight e4. Knight e4, this position. He might have thought that this is not something he wants to do. And if Magnus doesn't take it on this move, then he can go back bishop h7. 
But with bg6, Magnus now managed to create an imbalance. He first played the move knight h4 after 12 minutes of thought and a nice move because he's now going to win the bishop there. Bishop b4 played. Uh, bishop c2 was possible again attacking the pawn, but then Carlsen would have most likely played knight f5 and with the double bishop, maybe slightly better. Bishop b4, Magnus took, pawn takes, and now just try to think what would you play here as white try to be you know solid sort of a move yes the move that should come naturally to you is f3 because now you solidified your structure here also very importantly taken control of the e4 square knight f8 and now again a very good move connecting king f2 Knight e6, bishop moves back. You don't want to give up your bishop. You have the bishop pair, king e7, and now Magnus played the move h4. So here I was thinking to myself that, look, uh, Yan has, uh, Magnus has the bishop pair on g3. So what if Yan tries to exchange off one of the bishops? And so bishop d6 definitely crossed my mind. Uh, but it's not so simple. There are two ways to play. One is to take, king takes, and then play b4 with the idea of b5. So you go a6 to stop this pawn. And then knight a4 with the idea of knight c5. And it seems like white keeps a small edge here. The other move here was, and a very surprising move was f4. Because now I don't want to exchange the bishops yet. And if you play bishop b4 in order to get this square, I will go king g2. And if just as a, an example, if you take, take and play knight e4 here, trying to play this way, I can just drop my bishop back and keep my bishop pair. So these are the small kind of nuances which are there in the position and uh, Magnus was okay with bd6 coming in. So Yan first played a6 and here after 7 minutes of thought, again Magnus finds a very good move. Um, he plays the move king g2 because now if bd6 is played, he has just bishop f2. He won't exchange the bishops. So rook a d8 was played, now bishop uh, f2, bd6. And I think I was very proud of the next move that actually I could make. Uh, Magnus thought for quite some time before making this move. You can also try and think it's not a very special move or anything. It's just improving the position. And I don't know why he played it. I don't know why I felt that that was the move. It's maybe looking at so many Magnus games uh, over the years. The move is just bishop d3 and it just feels right. You know, you're just improving your bishop. You don't really have plans. Yes, in future you want to try for e4 break. But right now it's not possible because after take, take, g4 pawn will anyway hang. So, bishop d3 is more like just a small improvement. Bishop b8 played by Nepo. Knight a4 and now bishop d6 played. And here I want to take, I want you to take time and think what should white do. I tried to think in this position and I was utterly wrong when I thought I couldn't find this move. So let's see if you can do it. White to play. So one of the most natural moves that comes to our mind is rook h c1. At least that came to my mind. But it fails to g5. Very strong move. Uh, I can't take, rook is coming in, h5 might be possible, but then g6 break, also rook h. So moving the rook from the uh, from the h line is not a good idea. You know, rook h c1, not a good point. So, <clears throat> the move here that was played by Magnus was bishop e1. And this is a tremendous move. It's a tremendous move. The point is that I want to play b4 and knight c5. And when you look at it, you feel like, wow, that's an easy move to make. You know, that's the plan. 
but when you are in this position that move doesn't come naturally bishop e1 it kind of breaks the rooks the, the most natural moves are rook c1 or rook h c1 by the way rook a c1 is way better than rook h c1 it's also a decent but bishop e1 has a plan you know b4 and knight c5 yan actually loses his patience here goes for the move c5 but you know it's not so easy to play for example now g5 is met with h5 white is still better and if you play king d7 i'll just improve bishop d2 and then b4 knight c5 so on how do you improve as black not so simple he played c5 but now magnus took bishop takes and now your next question what do you do here as white white took so if you think carefully, you will see that e3 pawn is hanging. You have two ways to defend it, bishop f2 and bishop d2. For some time, I was tempted with bishop f2. But then when I thought a little more clearly, I said that the bishop on d2 does two roles. One is that it defends e3. Second is that it promotes b4. So bishop d2, very good move here by Magnus. And of course, the main point is that d4 never really works because I have the move e4. And you are not able to open up the position. Rook h e8 and now comes a very standard and typical idea b4 and b5. I'm undoubling my pawns. My bishop pair is getting stronger and stronger by the day. Here Nepomniachtchi started to flip out because if you take take this is already too good a position for white bishop pair the rook has to move this is weak bishop b4 check is coming in its curtains so a5 played by nepo he said to himself okay at the cost of one pawn i'm at least going to get rid of white's bishop pair magnus said thank you so much for the pawn i'm pawn up now king d6 and here he played the move king f2 very important because e3 pawn was attacked you have to defend it Rook e7 and now rook d1, bringing the rook here, rook h8 and uh, here g5, attacking the knight, the knight had to go back and this is another moment where you can pause the video and think what should white play, what would you do here as Magnus Carlsen and this is, these are the things we have to learn because you are better, you are pawn up but they are doubled pawns, it's bishop, superior bishop versus knight, still you need to convert it. Okay, so the first move that came to my mind was bishop e4, trying to win this pawn. But after rook e5, black is still within the game. Uh, you know, it's not winning. The other move, and actually the move that was played by Magnus, which is very practical, is rook a4. If you found this move to defend this pawn, good job. Mm, I would say this is maybe the best practical move. But... The strongest move here and very cool move is b6 and I really like this move because okay two things firstly if knight takes b6 I have rook b5 attacking the knight you don't know where to take the knight b7 would be hanging if you go back to d7 if you go back to c8 then a typical move here is e4 attacking here the bishop opens up rook in trouble. So b6, if knight b6, rook b5 is strong. And if rook h4, then once again e4. This is the key point here that I'm opening up the position. And if knight takes b6, still rook b5. King c6 doesn't work because of rook c1. The rook on b5 is protected. So this was the best way to continue. But he went rook a4, which is also the most logical. Knight c5 rook g4 and here okay if you go into this rook endgame this is going to be torture because the d5 pawn is also weak so apart from being a pawn down you also have a weakness so that's the reason why here he played the move king c7 and now for the final question and i think a beautiful moment in the game why to play what do you do so one way is to just and this was my idea was bishop e2. Like, why shouldn't I save my bishop? Everything's safe. d5 is attacked. Uh, you get maybe one point. I mean, it's you, how, you get half the points for this move. It's a natural. But it's a typical idea in IQP structure when this is weak. 
uh, or when you have a pawn on d4 and you want to push d5, you want this bishop to control this square. And how do you do it? Bishop b1 with the idea of bishop a2 to attack this. Very nice move. Loved it. And now it just collapses. Bishop a2, excellent move. Uh, one option is to go passive and try to defend, but there are just too many weaknesses. You know, I can just bring my rook attack here. So he went f6, but after take, take, Magnus chopped another pawn, takes, check, king g3. And now if you take on b2, you will lose the pawn on g6. So that's the reason why he played knight e5. Magnus went rook f4, rook d8 b6 check and uh, well this last move was very good i mean you can play e4 here which is okay uh, after rook d6 black hangs on but b6 is such a nice move because look firstly if you go king d6 here your b7 pawn hangs if you take the pawn i'll take this with a check if you go back to b8, I can anyway take it because then there is a back rank mate. And if you go to c8, I can give you a check and then pick up the pawn on uh, f6. So that's the reason why after b6, Nepo actually resigned the game and Magnus managed to win. What I loved in this game are these little nuances. It was like in the morning at 5 o'clock, I woke up and I set it up on the board and I was trying to guess Magnus. This is just insane you know this is how i love uh this is why magnus is one of the best in the world and he is right now at two uh two eight six one in this tournament and i have a very big feeling he's reached to two eight six five after this win i have a very big feeling that this is going to be his event you know he's going to run away with it he's going to play amazing chess the start has been great and we'll be following his games to learn from the world champion for now, this is Sagar Shah signing off.